I always mix your name up with Ariaga or Ariago. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I get that. Because but, you think of Asiago cheese. Yeah, Ariago. <laughs> That's Asiago. literally why. People go, oh, Asiago. Or Areola. I always, always get Areola. Areola? Like yeah, of course. <laughs> Sammy Areola. Grab the KY and get yourself ready. You got some slide to do. Oh, hang in now with TL and the boys. Maybe some critters too. So get your phone and get on the gram. You know where to find the man. Slide into the DMs. Go on your mind. Slide into the DMs. Oh, baby, take your time. Slide, slide, slip it on in. Here we go again. DM Monday. Welcome back to another episode of DM Monday. Got my co-host Mitch Wallace with me so today. Um, Trey Bonner is not here, but we have today's guest, Sammy Ariaga. What up? What? You nailed it on the first Got try. It. I wanted to get it. <laughs> I was sitting here rehearsing it in my Impressed. mind. How are you doing, dude? I am swell. It's been a minute since it. I seen you. I guess the last time I saw you is when we played that round together at Live Oak. That was so fun. Yeah, that was, was awesome. it me, you, and who else? It was Mary Cutter. Mary Cutter. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, was, that was a fun time. And then Zach yeah. Brown just popped up out of nowhere. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was cool. Zach Brown, not Zach Bryan. No, <laughs> nor Luke Bryan. Nor Luke Bryan. <laughs> what was the Dick Ryan. Dick Ryan. Yeah. <laughs> I'll fight you right now. We'll live stream it. So you haven't seen any of that on Twitter? Nothing. It's a and, whole And series, I'm always dude. on Twitter, too. It's great. Or not Twitter. I'm sorry. Uh, TikTok. Oh, TikTok. TikTok. No, I haven't seen it. You need to get on there, man. He, he like... Just type in Duke Ryan. He's saying he was the tour manager. For an artist that we're not going to say his name, we're going to call him Duke Ryan. But it was <laughs> and he's like Luke Bryan. He tells like the story of uh, the artist Duke yeah. Ryan not wanting like unorganic fruit and or vegetables yeah. or something. Yeah, and, <laughs> and, and like and Duke Ryan was like, "Well, you're fired." <laughs> yeah, so he fired him. And then Luke Bryan commented on, "I was like, I'll fight you anywhere, and we'll live stream <laughs> it on TikTok." <laughs> Thing is, like Luke got like seventeen thousand likes just as one what? comment. Yeah, it was yes. hilarious, dude. He's Luke lately's been like on on an Instagram live spree. Like that's all really? he does now. Really? He's always live on Instagram. Yeah, that's great. People love him. I think he's hilarious, dude. That's cool. Yeah, Do so you go live a lot? I do, but on uh, on TikTok. I but, knew the answer to this. I just teed it up for the listeners. <laughs> <laughs> well, I don't know if you knew this, but YouTube just launched their live version. Really? So you can go live on YouTube. I knew they had a, I went YouTube live one time and got like one viewer the whole time. And I was like, well, that was depressing. Never That's doing one that more again. view than a lot of other yeah. views. <laughs> Never doing that again. Yeah. I mean, I'm just like, I love using all the new tools. I'm yeah. just kind of like... A, a tech geek, if you will. Yeah. I just love figuring it yeah. all out. Yeah. But I did. I did it yesterday. I got like twenty people to watch. Not bad yeah. for our first one. Was it vertical yeah. live or was yeah, yeah, it vertical? Yeah, it's cool. one of those like Facebook lives, like same thing. Have you always had a mustache? I know. I just recently started. Dude, like, I love rocking it, it all. That the time. thing's thick, dude. I'm, dude, I I could thank my Cuban background for that. You yeah. got a little. Yeah. What is this thing? It's called? a little red, huh? A little soul patch. A soul patch. Know? A little yeah. soul patch. You have a little of, red in your hair in your beard. I think it's. Uh, yeah, that, my hair's in denial that I'm not in Miami. Yeah, yeah. See, I'm not. I'm not a ginger, but everybody always thinks I am because I'm I, bald now. Yeah, and I, I have red. Yeah, I have a lot of red in my beard, but yeah. I actually had brown hair when I had hair. Wild. Yeah. Yeah, but I guess definitely see you like being a, like having a more ginger. Yeah, beard. like I, I tan. I don't. You, know, you kind somewhere. of are a ginger then if the only hair you have. You kind of have like uh, skin like mine, like kind of Irish. Yeah. In the sense of like yeah. you, you get red first and then you tan. Yeah, I'll just like, take a hot shower and then I'm tan. There you go. You know, <laughs> take the sting out, baby. Dude, yeah. I'm taking a hot shower and somebody, dude, what the fuck's wrong with you? I was like, just got a shower. <laughs> yeah. Been mm-hmm. a long day. What'd you do today? I had a meeting in the morning yeah. with myself. I, I do a lot of meditation in the morning where I just dude, kind me of. me too. That's good. Yeah, dude. It's awesome. Do you do the guided on YouTube? I do not. No, yeah. I just I have an app where I literally open it up. And, oh, and it tells you what to and do. And it just tells me yeah, what to I've do. Yeah, I've done that before. And every once in a while, I'll just like turn on like piano music yeah. and just like steam up my shower yeah. and just like breathe. I just do breathing exercises. Have you got into cold plunging yet? No, nah, man, I can't. Yeah, I can't do can't that. Do it? No, no, I got I one can't. out back. It's <laughs> different though. Like if I'm jumping in a cold pool, yeah. that's different because it's like if the pool's not heated, then whatever, I'll just jump in. Dude, but when I'm it's like you. an intentional ice tub, no way. I'm bro. telling you, dude. Can't do it. It'll take you to another level, bro. I heard the rush is insane. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, It's all right. And the muscle recovery <laughs> is, is amazing. Is it really? Yeah, I mean, I, I do it three times a week. Do you really? Yeah. Dang. Yeah, yeah I'll, I'll have to join you sometime. I'm trying to get McElwain to do it. He ain't <laughs> it. Yeah. Um, I want to talk about where you're from. 
so you have like a you have a Spanish background. Uh, um, so where did you grow? Where were you born? So I was born in Miami, Florida. Cool. Miami. To be more specific, the city's called Hialeah. Okay. And if you're from the South Florida area, you'd know that Hialeah is like the Cuban area. Like that's where literally every Cuban. Is that where they film Scarface? Eat. Yeah. Yeah. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Like uh, South Beach, Hialeah, a little mixture of the two. When little, he's in the pool, he's like. <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen Yeah, that is actually on South Beach. Yeah. yeah. The yeah. pool's still there too. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but um, yeah, I'm from that area and I was, you know, I lived there for 18 years and spoke Spanish my whole uh, upbringing and, and school. I'd speak English with my Are friends. to your parents? Uh, Everyone. Spanish? Yeah. Everyone is from Cuba. Oh, Cuba. Yeah. And then like Are my- Are you the first generation born in the United States? Correct. Cool. Mm -hmm. So at home, it was all Spanish. Yeah, basically. What I'd about at school? Was it Spanish at school too? Yeah, because I mean, you got to keep in mind like the the pop, the most, uh, the majority of the population in South Florida is Hispanic. So at school, mm -hmm. whenever you're not in class, like if you're in the hallways or on a bus or just yeah. hanging out with your friends- you just speak in Spanish because that's like where they're from. A lot of them are from Colombia, Argentina, you know, yeah. so it's just natural. But when you're in class and you're being, you know, instructed in English, um, you just you kind of get into that headspace of just English. So I've, I'm thankful that growing up, you know, I was able to kind of keep both my speaking and my writing uh, strong. Um, but it wasn't until I moved to Nashville. I mean, I barely speak Spanish out here. It's, yeah. It sucks because I've noticed that whenever I go home for like a few weeks and I'll speak to somebody who's like really good at Spanish, um, I find myself stumbling, you know, cause wow. we're not using that muscle. Yeah. So, but no, it's, it's been nice though, because you know, as of late, you know, I've been really tapping into the Spanish thing with my music and it, I've, I've been dusting it off a little bit. So it's, yeah. it's nice. We uh, went to West Palm, uh, two weeks ago to play a radio show, the rib roundup. Thing. Oh yeah. yeah. Davey. Yeah. And, it's um, fun there, man. Yeah, it was a blast. But yeah. um, it was me, my manager, and uh, my guitar player, Colin. And my manager has this app where he like learns Spanish every day. Just Duolingo. Oh, yeah. oh Duolingo, yeah. 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 It's and super like, helpful. we'll be standing somewhere. I'll be like, what are you doing? He's like, we were actually waiting at baggage claim. He was like, this is my 88th day in a row of learning <laughs> Spanish or whatever. That's awesome. And, uh, but we kept getting in Ubers down there because we didn't have a car. And most of the Ubers we got in was like, oh, yeah, sorry, no English. Hispanics, you know? yeah. Yeah. And um, we, one night we got in the car and uh, with the Uber driver, and he was like, yeah, no English. So, And Colin wanted to stop and get a vape. Oh, God. <laughs> and yeah. Cape has, like, this app. And, he, dude, it was just a disaster. Like, you know, he's, like, bragging that he's, like, learning Spanish, but he's really hasn't done anything. He's, like, <laughs> looking up. But, anyways, we were able to stop and get a vape. Yeah. But it was just I just want to tell it because Alex is going to watch this. And, and he does not know Spanish. <laughs> and he does not know Spanish, and he's trying to learn it every day. That's great. Yeah. And vaping you played is, Sammy's music at that in that Uber. I, I did, dude. That's did you what really? I wanted to tell you. Yeah, no that, was, way. that was exactly where I was going. So uh, the guy was like, "Here, hook your phone up." Okay, and I and I played like uh, uh, what is it called? Uh, Seven Roses. Your yeah, the EP. The, yeah, the covers project. Um, the covers project. That's amazing. So um, thanks for doing. So, that. so I know you have like songs that are all the way in Spanish, but then you have what do they call it? Spanglish, right? Yeah, where it's like a mix. You kind of mix the two. So yeah. like I just mixed them. You know, there you like, go. I just played the mix. Ones nice. I was like, I want to enjoy this too. You know, let's what I mean? go. Yeah. yeah. I yeah. mean, it, it only adds the to the to the idea. You know, that I, like, you're already I, there in that. I looked at him. I was like, yeah, so yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, like, huh, 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 <laughs> you know? did he did he go? Ah. Yeah, he was like, yeah, yeah good, right, nice. That's, That's sick, dude. Up. Where did that come from? What made you start like doing Spanish and English versions? It kind of comes from, you know, moving from Miami to Nashville and being like, look, like, let's face the facts. They have their own culture. We have ours, yeah. right? And country is very protective. That's the right word, I feel. It's like they're very protective of their sound, of what country music is to them. And I love that. That's one of the reasons why I fell in love with the genre is because of that. Just like they preserve their country music. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I feel like, Latin music does the same thing, mm -hmm. um, but country music, man, they're diehard. You know, they don't play around. They're, they'll let you know when something's country or not. Right. Um, but I realize I'm like, look, I, I'm an outsider. I'm not from the South. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm from the South South, from which is the what South, I say. Which is like, a, it's, yeah. it is a different country. Exactly, over, down there. yeah. And so I'm like, you know what? I'm not trying to change anything. I'm not trying to like 
reinvent the wheel here. I'm just going to give them exactly what they love already, but in a, with a little twist, mm -hmm. just like make it a different language, but the music stays the same. And let's see if there's people out there that just like understand this fusion, this experiment. Right. And so last summer, uh, my dad actually was like, look, you sing really beautifully in Spanish. I think you should, you know, you're 12 years into town. You should just give it a shot. Start singing yeah. in Spanish, see what happens. And so he's like, you should just do Beautiful Crazy. That's an easy song to do. It's yeah. very melodic. Everybody loves it. It's a love song. If it goes, it's going to go. So I'm like, all right, cool. I spent like 30 minutes to an hour translating the lyric with my dad and then popped my phone up on my office desk, sang the song really quick on my acoustic and didn't think anything of it. I posted it and then I went live, which is what I tell all my friends to do yeah. is post the video and, immedi live. and immediately go live. Yeah. yeah. And I wasn't looking at the video. And by the time I was done with my live, 90 minutes in, I looked 650,000 views. Wow. Like, That's awesome. Like that. Yeah. It was like nothing I'd ever seen before. So this and was that, your dad's idea? It was my dad's idea. Yeah. Well, That's he awesome. he told me since I first moved to Nashville, when even before when I did the American Idol auditions in 2010, that country music has always needed like a modern representation of the Latin mm -hmm. culture. Yeah. Right. There have been many in the past, like, you know, Johnny Rodriguez, Rick Trevino, Freddie yeah. Fender, um, Rick Orozco. I mean, there's so many, um, the Texas Tornadoes, um, but there hasn't been like Frank a modern- Ray. Frank Ray, that, well, yeah. he's more modern. Yeah. That's what, that's, yeah. and that was gonna get to that, yeah. So Frank Ray's representing the modern uh, Latin movement in country music, uh, Valerie Ponzio, myself, um, Alex Georgia from Cat and Alex, Cat Luna still doing stuff too. There's, it, there is a lot of us doing it. Yeah. There just hasn't been one to like- To really pop to off. To really pop yeah. off, yeah. And so yeah, I'm just uh, thankful that we have like TikTok and Reels, you know, so that we can get our music out to the people who are consuming it and are causing the music to blow up. So, and that's, and we feel like it's happening right now. And yeah, dude. I'm super excited. That's, that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, I saw Frank Ray bef before he like blew up, you know, it's like, full on doing the artist thing. He was doing the cover yeah. scene for a long time and he would play at Tin Roof, Birmingham. Oh, nice. I lived That's in Birmingham. Cool. That's awesome, His man. band's fucking awesome. They are. They're um, tight. They're great, man. Yeah. yeah. So when you translate these songs, are you doing it like one for one words or are mm. you translating it into a yeah, Spanish like the, slang? As a songwriter, is the the rhyme schemes like, you it's, know what I mean? Do they, do they line up or, you know? Yeah, it's tricky because, you know, English doesn't always translate to Spanish directly, mm -hmm. especially when right. it comes to the amount of syllables. And also there are sayings and words that we use in the South, depending on where you are from the South, that like y'all, <clears throat> they just don't make sense in Spanish. Mm -hmm. Like they're just sayings that are made so specifically for English that in Spanish, it wouldn't even make sense in conversation. Yeah. So like, you can't even use it. Like, yeah, I ain't doing that. Exactly. Like, I, there's yeah, songs yeah. where I literally have to tell the person who requests a song that, sorry, this literally, the, the hook line of the song, the Makes most important no part of the song, <laughs> I can't translate it. Like, yeah. it's impossible. My favorite and, was, uh, my favorite is sa the Save Me Save version. Me, yeah. Because yeah. Jelly Roll was like, do one of my songs, please. Yeah, yeah, or something. yeah. And he like commented on it. Yeah, I'm, man, I'm thankful, man. He's... He's one of the few, you know, if not like most known artists that I've done a cover of that have taken the time to show some love to the videos. And as you know, as a content creator, like just getting a little comment or a like. Dude, is, he's like a very, he's I feel like he's a very aware guy of like what's going on in the yeah. music. Very like, compassionate. I, I saw like yeah. somewhere where he said like he doesn't like listen to music, but he listens to it enough to know what's going on. But I've always noticed that about him, that he's always aware of like what's going on. He's there. a community player. Like every time know? I've seen him yeah. at a radio thing or any, like we did two shows with him. He's always just like taking his time to like invite me on his bus or like, you know, he had me come up on stage and sing with him. I love know? that. Like that's he's awesome. just a good dude. I think that that's why he does what he does is mm -hmm. is the fact that he has that ability to just like make the people around him happy, mm -hmm. and that's a that's a trait that I wish a lot of more people on earth had. Yeah. So, yeah, he's definitely one of my inspirations, and it was a no brainer because you know that the lyric of that song also, you know, I really connect with it very much because mm -hmm. especially with my background, you know, yeah. and where I come from, just that lyric just really hit home, and I was yeah. like, I have to do this one in Spanish. So, yeah. 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 So. You grew up in Miami. A lot of people we talked to got into music in church. 
yeah singing in like southern baptist church what how, where, where did music start for you it's it's funny because i also uh, went to church with my grandmother growing up all the time but i wasn't necessarily in church like i wasn't working at the church or singing at the church um but i was very active and i'd listen to christian music um all the time with my grandmother in the car um, spanish at, christian music yeah spanish cool. yeah and a lot of them were very strong vocalists so you know hearing that in the background while grandma was cooking or while she was driving me you know picking me up from school um you know as a kid you're a sponge right so you're absorbing yeah. everything around you um so in combination with like what my mom used to listen to like the whitney houston's the brian mm -hmm. adams the you know the Ch chicago like you know uh, yeah. peter satara um i would listen to all that growing up sting and then i listened to my grandma's christian music it basically like subconsciously i guess it inspired me to even be a vocalist because that was the first thing i was a singer first and then I learned the guitar, and then I learned how to write songs. So, when did singing come in? How old were you, you think? I mean, I was singing since I was like seven, eight, very I very feel young. like, yeah. I mean, you got um, a great voice. Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah, thank you I very much. I feel like most people Nobody speak, else in your family sang, really sang? Like, my dad sings a yeah, little bit. Yeah. He just, he's not a, a professional. Like, yeah. he doesn't make do it for a living, so he always, like, waters it down. Yeah. But um, but he's he's pretty good, and he plays guitar, too. So mm -hmm. he, he's he got some, you know, a musician in him. Um, But the, vo the voice truly came from my dad's dad, my grandfather, yeah. uh, Rene. And uh, he, uh, I met him when I was a baby, so I, my brain doesn't mm -hmm. remember b yeah. the moment. But I did encounter him, like, a couple times early on, and... And unfortunately, I couldn't actually have like a, you know, like yeah. an actual conversation with him. But apparently he's where I get my talent from. So Yeah, yeah. it's awesome. awesome. Yeah. I feel like uh, Spanish is a beautiful language. Mm. It sounds so like, I don't know, it just sounds beautiful to hear like spoken. Mm. So singing is is really cool to hear. Like, Thanks. and, and it, yeah. it makes me think almost all people that speak Spanish can probably sing a little bit. Just because they oh, sound yeah. so beautiful just talking. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, and I will say that just the language in itself is very poetic. Like yeah. the way that we, you know, I feel like the beautiful thing about the Spanish language is that you cannot express a certain sentiment unless it's sung a certain way. So like right. words have a melody. Yeah, you have to like let it roll you off your to, tongue a certain yeah, way to make there's it like ups the right word. and there's downs. And there's yeah. a, when you talk to a Latina or a Latino next time, yeah. I want you to focus on the way they speak. And Mexicans actually do it very strongly. It's like, yo no sé cuándo hablo así. Yeah. And they have like this like rhythm mm -hmm. when they talk. Yeah. And every culture in the Latin world has their own melody, if you will. Yeah. So Argentinians have a certain flow, you know, uh, Venezuelans, Colombians, everybody's got like their own unique, beautiful flow. And that's why, you know, I feel like you think that's the awesome. Spanish language is so cool. So, yeah. It's just, so, what did you just say a, a second ago? Nothing. Nothing. I just yeah. made something up. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm just speaking complete gibberish. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Do you ever hear like, uh, like let's try it. Shlam, 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 <laughs> shlam, shlam, <laughs> shlam, <laughs> shlam. <laughs> um, do you, I have, I have two questions and they're completely irrelevant. Yeah. Um, Question number one is when you watch Narcos, do you have to have the subtitles on? I do because I just, uh, I'm kind of deaf. Okay. Because I listen to my music so loud all the time. I love watching shit with subtitles Me too, on, bro. Dude. Like I, get, I, I do yeah. English things, but you know what they're saying though. Yeah. I, yeah. If I could turn it off and I'd understand what they're saying. But I just personally, like That's I've become cool. so accustomed to having subtitles on everything now. Yeah, I do that as well. That, yeah. It's just easier to like read and like sometimes you'll miss things being said in the back. Anyway. All right. um, That's true, yeah. My next question was, uh, oh, do you ever have people around you speaking Spanish thinking nobody can understand them, but you can? Sometimes I'll be in all a store the and there'll be like a family oh, yeah. saying Here some shit. They're talking shit about oh, you. Oh my God, here all the time. Yeah. You in can Nashville. hear them talking shit? Yeah. Well, yeah, because I mean, I'm, I mean, <laughs> You ever call them out? On I don't him? look Hispanic, yeah, yeah, like yeah. you know. And so, whenever I show up to like a Mexican joint here in town, they instantly speak in English because, of course, you know, yeah, yeah. it's mainly English speaking people here. And uh, and then I'll be like, "Traeme una bolsa de, de nachos con salsa," and, I, and they're like, "Wait, what? Like, how do you speak it so well?" I'm like, "Well, because I'm Cuban." Yeah. And so it's it's just funny how. But like, do you ever catch them saying some like? Oh, some talking like, shit about talking, people or uh, you or anything? Not, not, not too much. No, no. 
So not at the really. Mexican restaurant, when they're talking to each other, they're not talking shit. No, they they talk about like their own thing. Yeah, like they're when they're lot, talking they're about own. you, you know it. You can yeah, just pick up on the body language. language. Yeah. 100%. hundred percent. That's yeah. sick. Cool. That, yeah. that was my two random questions. But oh. That is funny though. I, I mean, I could definitely see that happening. <laughs> so you've been in Nashville for twelve years. Thirteen. Thirteen. In May. What year did you move here? Twenty eleven. Twenty eleven. Wow. How old are you? I am thirty one, turning thirty two. Nice. Nice. Yeah. So um, I was no- I noticed um earlier that you've put out a shit ton of music yeah i'm yeah. on a spree right now so are you single now or what because we heard this because i heard this song uh uh the phone song take my phone take, take my phone, phone. Yeah, yeah, my favorite yeah. song i played that for yeah yeah i mean somebody take my phone. yeah i love that one it's a it's a, it's a good that one's kind of old though a couple of years huh yeah, I mean, I, I dropped that one with the debut so, album. So, I mean, are you single? I mean, we need to get you a girlfriend or what? You know what? I'm so married to my career at the moment yeah. that it's going to take a very... So, slide into the DMs. I told my dad, I'm like, because, you know, Hispanic families, you always have to talk to, like, your, you know, your aunt or your tia, if you Why will. you don't have a good girl? And they're like, why are you always single? I never see you with a girl. Is there something I don't know? Yeah. <laughs> I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, no, I'm just so focused on like what I'm doing. Um, and I, you know, I'm the kind of guy that like, if I'm not surrounded by somebody who inspires me mm-hmm. or motivates me to be a better person, right on. Um, I just, I'd rather just stay single, just yeah, do my man. own thing. They know? want them yeah. grandkids running around. Yeah, yeah. I'm thankful that I'm not like one of, yeah. you know, somebody that's like constantly looking for, yeah. For, you know, for a, um, have your what did your uh, parents do for work growing up? Like your dad, my uh, my mom did uh, auto insurance. Yeah, growing up, my grandmother worked at uh, the airport doing meal prep oh, for nice. uh, Luz Fansa. Um, so she worked in like the cold, mm-hmm. like basically with like those suits where you know you put together the meals and like bring them on the planes. Mm. Um, and then you know uh, a few years later, she started doing like security guard work like where they have the clipboard at the front of the yeah. apartment complex she yeah. did a little bit of that um and then my mom got into cosmetology and and uh and beauty so she started doing like hair extension stuff and and That's waxing awesome. and whatnot but my dad uh is in the in the medical world he does radiology oh nice. and he runs a radiology center in south florida and that's what's been, you know, the anchor of the family. So when it so. came to your music, were they supportive of you chasing that or not? It really? was a little bit of both. Yeah. Um, my dad, you know, especially coming from Cuba with nothing and, you know, having to basically start over and mm-hmm. go to school and get a degree. And when you are basically, I guess, blessed with the American dream like yeah. he was, you kind of fall in that headspace of like, you need to have a plan B. Yeah. You need to go to school. You need to have a degree. Yeah. And so he wanted me after the American Idol auditions to to go to school to ha- just just have some degree of some did sort. You, all right, so did you try out for American Idol and make it or not? Or what happened there? Yeah, so I did American Idol in 2010. It was a season of Scotty McCreary and Lauren Elena. Oh, nice. Yeah, I got to meet them in Hollywood as well. Super nice. Yeah. And then uh, I made it as far as Hollywood. Mm-hmm. So I made it to the top. 200 i believe yeah and uh i sang a song that wasn't popular yeah and due to my song choice probably they, fucking crushed it what song was it dude it was gary allen it was get off on the pain oh that dude I, I know dude i wanted that song to be a hit so bad i love that song i don't know yeah. that song but That's i love cool. gary allen and the first line yeah. is i don't know why i love women they love, love to, to do, do me wrong, wrong. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like my, what is it? My life feels it's like, like a, country, a heartbroken, heartbroken country, country song. song. Yeah, I ain't really happy unless the sky starts driving rain. Right, right. Maybe I just get off on the pain. I mean, that's country <laughs> music. Right? I that's mean, good. that's a damn good song. Yeah. And so I recognized a good song and I heard one. Even when I was learning, like that was like in the very beginning yeah. of when I was just learning country music. I mean, yeah. I'm not going to lie, being raised in Miami, country was not played on our radio not station. At all. Not at all. Mm-hmm. And I stumbled upon it because, you know, I had LimeWire and and I feel like we all, you know, downloaded like the the we viral all the illegally viral, downloaded yes, music. Yes. We heard that and, uh, what was it, the Bill Clinton line? Yeah. <laughs> if it was if you downloaded the wrong file, it was just him talking. <laughs> so, really? yeah. I did oh, not man. have sex I, I didn't relations stumble upon that. with that woman. <laughs> well bless what bless the broken road was one of yeah. the like the trending audios and I heard it. 
And I was like, whoa, this is insane. Yeah. Is, yeah. And this was labeled country. I'm like, this doesn't sound country, but I love it. And so I fell in love with Rascal Flats. Then I dove into Keith Urban, Garth Brooks, Ben Skill. And then he fell in love with Rascal Flats because he could sing along with that shit. That's what yeah, I, yeah. yeah. I, I mean, Gary, man, doesn't. Dude, I doesn't love get get, doesn't get better yeah, than Gary. Gary Box, yeah. He's amazing. But uh yeah, that was like my first like I guess introduction to country music and then I decided to just dive in, study like the greats, you know, the Hanks, the Merle Haggards, you mm -hmm. know, um you name it. You know, I was like doing my homework and Gary Allen was one of them and fell in love with his music and I chose that song not even thinking about how kind of like gross the word get off on the pain yeah might have come off on tv now looking back i'm like i could see why they didn't yeah. let me go through but i i thought the song was great and i sang it with conviction and they, they didn't let me go through and i was kind of bummed but i uh i decided to uh, go to orlando florida to try to get a degree in full sale yeah the the recording arts school there yeah. and uh was there for only four or five months and then I realized that school wasn't for me and I literally walked myself into the office and said, I ain't coming back. Yeah. And they're like, what do you mean? I'm like, I'm, that's what exactly what I mean. Yeah. I'm not coming back. Sorry, I'm out. And so I jumped in my car. What did your parents think about that? Were they like, I didn't tell them. You didn't tell them? Nope. I didn't tell them because I knew that if I were to say anything, that they were just going to freak out and beat your ass. And beat my ass. Yeah. Because <laughs> again, I mean, school, school was yeah. all my dad's credit. Yeah. So yeah. if I would have told them. Or yeah, he would have flown to Nashville and beat my ass. Yeah, but so but, you uh, just left there and drove to Nashville. Yeah, thirteen I mean, hours. If, if you want me to share a pretty crazy uh, part of that story, so back when we had jewel cases with CDs, mm -hmm. I would literally grab the booklets and look through the credits. And whenever I'd find like a producer name or a songwriter name, I would just take the first and last and go to Facebook at the time, which is like the only social media platform yeah. we had. And uh, I would just search for them. And if yeah. it said mutual friends, that was like my sign that it was yeah. like the legit account. Yeah, yeah. And I would just follow everyone, as many people as I possibly could. Um, and I followed about 50 to 80 people. And I had like a template message that I copy pasted to every single person. And uh, I guess that's like my dad's businessman in me. Yeah. And uh, he, uh, I got I got a couple of replies and some of them were writers that helped Keith Urban get off the yeah. ground. Um, one of them being Monty Powell, wrote yeah. all the early stuff for Keith. Yeah. And then um, another one was Terry Sawchuck who wrote Bear for Blue Jean Night for Jake yeah. Owen and uh, a few others. Um, and and then, they responded? And yeah, they both responded and they said, hey, if you're in Nashville, let us know. We'll show you around. We'll try to get you, try to get you going. And that was enough courage for yeah. me to just say, I'm dropping myself out of school. Dude, that's almost. awesome to anybody listening. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know. That's it. I mean, that's that's rough because that's a lot. I mean, you probably sent probably, you know, 500 messages and, yeah. you know, got maybe two or three responses. But Yeah, it's like fishing. You yeah. It's like you can't expect throwing one line. I mean, don't message getting... me. I'm probably not going to respond. <laughs> but, uh, you know. I'll respond on his account. On his Finsta, <laughs> he will. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one thing I've noticed, uh, I didn't grow up listening to country music, so I don't know much about country. Um, but one thing I've noticed meeting artists and songwriters is that the good ones have dove into those booklets. I didn't know those things existed. Oh, yeah. First of all, I had no <laughs> fucking idea. But as I've talked to like Trey and all these other artists, I'm like, how did you know? How did you know who wrote that song from 15 years ago? Oh, yeah. I read every every word of every yeah, pamphlet yeah. that came with the cd or with the album yeah. i read it all yeah. and i'm like dude i didn't even know that shit existed i mean i was like, adding yeah i mean it's I was, like you just take this and yeah just go through it you like know? that thing has it in there yeah this has it in here yeah like it looks so like it, crazy, it looks like dude. it's not but it actually folds See, out it opens up folds yeah. open, like no that. idea i had no yeah, idea look at that, that yeah it has everything it on like uh let's see Indian Outlaw, Tommy Barnes, Gene Simmons, John D. Loudmilk. That's crazy. Yeah. Well, that's exactly what I would do. I'd just do exactly what I And then you would just find did. those three names and Facebook I would, them. I would add everyone. Engineers, musicians, producers. This everyone. has the publishing company and everything. That's yep. cool. Mm -hmm. um, I would just go ahead. Yeah, but then it's like. Does it have mm -hmm. the photographer on there? 
<laughs> no. It never does, dude. <laughs> it might. Things it don't might. change. <laughs> it might. It has the management, fan club, yep. Tim McGraw's fan club. But it doesn't have the photographer. Booking, CAA. That's cool. They made it on there. Yeah, but the photographer didn't. <laughs> <laughs> see, they might. They might. Let's see drums. Nope. Look and uh, let's see. I'd like this clip for my social media. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> clip it. <laughs> Whatever you get paid, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah. The photographers never make hey, it. Who in. knows? That guy probably never got paid. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. They didn't have Venmo then. You've been employed by this guy. I don't want to hear it. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I'm never in anything. <laughs> uh, but anyways, yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, but man, American Dream Chaser. Trying, man. I so mean, that's like some every day I'm hustling type so shit. So you messaged those guys and, came and then drove to Nashville and they took you around? Yeah. So basically, I. You're crazy as hell. I had a lease in place. I had an, yeah, I had an apartment in an association. I had a, I mean, I was going to school at Full Sail. So literally, I was. I was supposed to be there. <laughs> did you have roommates or like did a you girlfriend do? No, or somebody I, I, that said you were crazy? Did you live in your car have... when you first got here? Or what would you do? So that was the plan. The plan, I, I literally grabbed four towels and then I was literally going to like park in a truck stop. Go to Planet and Fitness just, and shower? Or yep, what? go yeah. to Pilot, pull yeah. up, shower there, whatever. Which the and showers at Loves are really nice. They are. They're so Dude, awesome. they're, they're, a, they're a road hack. You get your own room. Yeah. It's like if you, can't get a, if you don't want to get a hotel, yeah. you just want to shower on the way, yeah. stop there. You get a sandwich as, as yeah. well. Dude, yeah. the yeah. Love like, stuff, is, it's nice in there. It's, you take your towel yeah. in there. I love it. Yeah. It's great. They but, give you um, a towel and everything, yeah. washcloth, it's, all of it. Yeah. I, yeah. I always tell my friends that are touring, like, that's a little road hack for them. But, um, but yeah, I would uh, basically just reach out to as many people as possible. Um, and as soon as I had, like, enough contacts where I can, like, you know, kind of bounce from one to the other, I just, I didn't have much. It was a small apartment. And... Um, I just packed whatever I could. I even left the big stuff, like the the the, the bed, the, the the bed frame, uh, the the couch, all that stuff. And I literally just told my my neighbor that I knew, take whatever you want, and the rest was history. And then my dad had to call in the apartment complex and let them know, you know, after I told them like three months in, I, I waited three months to tell him. Wow, damn. Yeah, he th he thought I was in South in, in Orlando. He thought was, was he there. mad? Or did you wait until something? He was cool a little happened? mad, but I waited for a little stability so that I could yeah. at least be like, "Dad, I've been here for three. I've months. been here for three I'm months. I got money. I got flow. I'm good. I got a job. I what didn't was your freak, first job. I didn't freak him out. Here. I went straight to Tootsie's and Rippy's down. Oh, wow. down on Broadway. So you were like, I'm doing music, and I'm. I, yep. I no did, plan B, dude. No plan B. I went straight. Did you for, have to do that red redneck? music school or whatever it's called <laughs> wait did it what's no. it called what's it called Matt going uh, no uh, what's his name Steve uh, Scott, Scott Collier yeah what's who is his it? name Scott Collier Honky Tonk Scott he ain't oh really no I went through John John Taylor that's no there's this yeah. thing on uh, it's yeah, on Oh, John, that's Uncle John. Yeah, 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 like he ran everything. Is that him? <laughs> yeah. No. So, yeah, there's like yeah, this yeah. thing on a, on a, a TikTok now. It's called Honky Tonk School. And okay. it's like, it's on Broadway. And the guy that like runs it or whatever, they like have classes in the bars like during the day. Really? It's it's, it's quite comical. Um, <laughs> but this, the other day, he was, <laughs> we saw this one video where the guy was like, uh, you know what you're going to be? He, and the get, kid goes, a country music singer. And he goes, well, yeah, you're going to be that. But you're going to be the next Trace Atkins <laughs> or something like that. It was just ridiculous. Yeah. God. Yeah, but I did that whole round, man. I was uh, I walked up to Tootsie's and I tipped the band, of course. Yeah. Um, and I said, hey, what do I got to do to sing one song? Yeah. And I did Somebody Like You, Keith Urban. And that was I did not know that was going to be my audition song, but thankfully John was literally sitting on the stool, like r the first stool at the edge of the bar. If you know, yeah. if you know, like how yeah. Tootsie's looks on the yeah. inside. And I skipped the audition process and he's like, dude, you have a great voice. What are you yeah. doing tomorrow? Yeah. And I got right to work. It was like, Damn. Dude, that's instant. awesome. Is that yeah. how you met Cooper or what? Uh, no, actually. Yeah. No, no, no. I met uh, Brooke Eden. Yeah. Like okay, when I yeah. first moved to Nashville, yeah. she was in, she was doing the whole yeah. Titi's rotation. She was like 
like really yeah. involved and in the rotation. She was, you were she like, was, man, if I could just be like her, I'd be making it. Well, no, she was really involved in the in the in the sense of like she they had her traveling to Florida to play the Tootsie. Oh wow, and like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, 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 yeah, yeah. So if you play, and, the, yeah, you play the Tootsie. Yes, you're good but to go. she was it's like, in Destin, right? Yeah, yeah, but she was part of that circle. Yeah, like where she didn't do anything else but that. Yeah, I, I was just like keeping a little distance because I knew yeah. that I was, I wanted to do that just to kind of stay afloat. Yeah. But I knew that like, if you get too deep into that scene, yeah. a lot of the times there's no turning back. Cause you back. had talked to all your songwriter friends that you had met on. Correct. And they had Internet. warned me too. They're like, yeah. Hey, you know, do Broadway for now, you know, yeah. pay your bills, but be careful because you're going to hurt your voice. You're going to be known as that, yeah. you know? And you know, once you're committed to that gig, it's like really hard to get out of it, you know? Right. Um, and so I kept that in mind and I did it, I did it for a few years. I played, I played the Broadway thing for, I'd say maybe four to five years. You know, I, I hopped from Tootsie's to Rippies. I did Margaritaville for a little bit. Um, then I went to Honky Tonk Center every once in a while. And then I made my way all the way down to Wild Horse, which is like yeah. a, a luxury gig. Yeah. Like it's so nice. Um, and unfortunately it's not there anymore. Dang, I always Luke wanted to bought play, it. <laughs> I, I always wanted to play the uh, yeah the stage. Me too. Like, dude, yeah. I, would, I would like come it's here. It's one of my favorite spots. I would like, yeah. I would like come here, like, just and hang out with some buddies and stuff. And I'd be like, man, because I was I played in a cover band for like eight years. That was my or six years. That was nice. I mean, it was still Trey Lewis band, but we were playing yeah. covers, you know. Hey. But I always remember like coming up here to visit with friends or come up here to record a song or something, and we'd go to Broadway, and I'd be like. Man, I want to play the stage. I think it was in a movie or something. Like, man, that that strip right there, just like the stage, Tootsie's, Roberts, Layla's, like it's so historic. Yeah, I mean, so much dope stuff has happened there. I got the mural in there. Yeah, they stuff. they preserve a lot of the stuff that you know has been there for so many years, and uh, that that's why I love country music. Like no other genre does that. Yeah, you know. So. And in November of 2020, I was playing. I. I'd got a my I'd play Tin Roofs forever, but I got a Tin Roof gig downtown, and I was okay. about to just like start getting in the mix and just start playing Broadway, and then oh really? Dick down in Dallas happened, and then that was all she wrote. It's a blessing, yeah, yeah, it's a blessing. So, yeah, but man, that's a, definitely a grind. Anybody that plays on Broadway, I yeah, definitely respect. I commend it. them. Yeah. It's not easy, and like yeah. once you turn that gear on, like you're on for four hours straight, yeah, sometimes five, and you're singing like super upbeat songs and yeah. you're not allowed to take a break it's yeah. Yeah. it's really hard on the body the mind the voice oh we know don't but, we McElwain? yeah dude it's <laughs> it's no joke so yeah. shout out to everybody yeah. that's uh doing um, this so thing. how did you uh get linked up with the 615 and all that, the 615 house chris and all those guys uh ashley you're like one of the yeah. originals yeah i was very very lucky to have been one of the ogs at the 615 house um so Ashley Cook and I go back. We're old friends. We, you know, we both have been in town for a while, mm -hmm. both from Florida. Yeah. And um, she was j had just gotten started with the idea um, because you know after the pandemic there was you know this craze over the hype house out in yeah. LA, yeah. which is basically for those watching, it's basically a house where they basically. Uh, have like several influencers live together so they can make content and you know create like this one TikTok page called the hype house mm -hmm. and they just pump out stuff all the time and ashley quickly noticed that nashville didn't have anything like that and uh, she had been talking with chris rudiger before it was even called the 615 house about creating something in that vein and uh, they both launched it together and they reached out to the first people that came to mind um, that had something going on. Mm -hmm. And they also made sure that the brands didn't clash. Mm -hmm. So they made sure they hit up people that had their own thing going. Um, and I'm thankful that, you know, Ashley, you know, I was on, I was on her, uh, on her caller list to, um, to hit me up first. And, and that honestly moved the needle for me in so many ways. It allowed me to like truly understand how to approach TikTok, how to mm -hmm. approach content creation. And it also allowed me to connect with other artists that I probably would have never met if it wasn't for the house. Yeah. That's awesome. Were you planning on making a TikTok when you got here, when you pulled up, or you just saw the sunset and you were like, hey, Mitch, will you come film? That's me? it. Yeah. I saw the sunset See? and I'm like, eh, it's golden hour. Mitch, yeah. you got a camera and we yeah. got a beautiful yeah. sun. It's time. That's awesome. Yeah. When, do you remember when you made your TikTok, what that thought was? Your TikTok account? Yeah. Um, 
Ashley actually was the one who called me. It, we were we were actually during it was during lockdown, and she had already had some great traction on there. I think she was like at about two hundred to three hundred thousand followers at the time. She's like at one point two, one point three. She's crushing it now. Um, but um, she was she hit me up and she goes, Sammy, like, what are you doing? Like, why are you not like why are you not taking advantage of this app? Like, you could be you know growing your fan base you can be increasing your streams this has really moved the needle for me um you know it's not for everyone but you know i suggest you give it a shot it's yeah. it's going to be good for you yeah. and priscilla blog was also killing it at the time yeah um she was like the first like yeah country artist to like yeah her and her andrew janakis yeah uh, janakis um yeah. with gone too soon good good buddy of mine incredible vocalist um but when, uh, I, when i went viral on uh tiktok priscilla was like my rock like i yeah, just yeah. called her and was like hey what should i do yeah about man this? she's like, she's smart and because she yeah. went through it and i guess it was like september and then my shit yeah i mean she like, she basically November. laid out the blueprint to how yeah. like artists should basically promote themselves and and use this tool to their advantage and you know the the cool thing is that i have you know this this angle where i can sing in spanish and that's something that i'm you know Thankfully, there's, there's not a lot of other people in Nashville yeah. that are doing that. So I've been able to basically, you know, embrace that and mm -hmm. use it to my advantage to, you know, let that community know that th there's somebody in country music just like them, yeah. you know, performing the music that they love. So, yeah. yeah. Have you had any like crazy DMs asking people asking you to come play their like, backyard or anything like that? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, basically, uh, I get a lot of people calling me about, you know, Hispanic weddings, yeah. you know, what, where the husband will be, you know, straight up American, doesn't speak Spanish, and then his wife is Mexican. Yeah. And I'm sure you get cameo they'll, they'll requests too. They'll get, yeah, I get cameo requests. I get, uh, uh, re request to record a song from the bottom up so they could play it during the first yeah. dance. Um, I've been requested to come to the actual wedding and perform in person. And most of the people that are hitting me up are from Texas. Yeah. It's really cool because they have a lot of like bilingual weddings yeah. down there because yeah. of the, because of the crossover. Yeah. That's awesome. Do you say yeah. yes to any of them? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, we have a big event happening at the end of May in San Antonio, which I'm really stoked about. I've never performed in San Antonio. Yeah. And it's a private event, so. Nice. You already know what hell that means. Yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. Private money. Yes, sir. Yeah, baby. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Man, that's really cool, dude. Um, I have questions. So I have a I have questions. My <laughs> college roommate, his family is in Tampa. They're Cuban. Okay. And I've been down there twice, maybe more. But whatever, a couple times to visit them. And every time we he comes, like we'd go together. So he would go to visit. They'd have like a big gathering. Mm. And my favorite part about them was obviously like their love for family and community is awesome. But we would play dominoes. Yeah. All night, dude. We'd play yeah. uh, like, I think it was called like Mexican Train. Okay. Or something. Mm -hmm. I don't know, dude. But dominoes, is was that a thing in your family? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Cubans love to play dominoes, especially the older Cuban guys. Yeah, you dude. Know, I go, wish dominoes was a thing. I wish that yeah. the American culture would spread that. It's because it's so yeah. much fucking fun. Yeah, it's it's interesting because um I feel like if you're a, a chess enthusiast or even checkers, like I feel like you'd like dominoes because you're ba it's basically like you have to shuffle the dominoes upside down. And you grab 10 at random and you have to be very selective of like which ones you use because yeah. because you want to make sure that you're the last one on the board and puts the last piece down. The first person without any pieces left is the winner. So it's it's a very strategic game and like yeah. Yeah, it's, a, it's very, it's kind of like poker. You have to kind of read your opponent. Dude, it was fun. So, and if you mess up, and especially in a house full of drunk cubans there's a lot of yell and everybody's loud oh yeah like, man it's so competitive and they'll, dude, they'll joke on you like it's so competitive yeah it's, it was so much they'll fun, throw dude. the piece that ah. uh, yeah dude yelling there's tequila shots everywhere <laughs> like yeah that shit was awesome dude and, and the cooking was phenomenal yeah like, it but Doesn't i'm a really better. picky eater mm. so like a lot of it i was kind of like oh fuck i don't want to eat that what what didn't you like i i i'm Did very you like picky yuka? i don't know what that Did is they feed you yuka? I don't know. I don't know what they fed me. Look, but Mitch hates, a lot of people don't like Mexican yuka. food. When we tell them, <laughs> going, really? When, when, we, so tell picky, them, when we tell them we're going to Cinco, he's like, "Yeah, I'll go, but I'm not going to eat anything." Oh no, Cinco is <laughs> has made me food poisonings. Why I don't want to eat there a lot. <laughs> that I had food poisoning spot? there once. Huh? That specific spot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, I got. I, the I like some Mexican, yeah, yeah. but I am picky. But the only reason I ate her food was out of like I'll eat out of respect. 
Mm. She, I know she made that from scratch. So out of respect for that, I'll try it. Like, even yeah. though it looks like something I'm not going to like, I'll always try that. That's across the board, though. I will tell you this, and you guys live close. You should go to Plaza Mariachi, which is nearby. Yeah. They have, like, 100% authentic Mexican food. Nice. It, it does not get better than that. You know, in Texas, they call salsa uh, hot sauce. Salsa, salsa roja? Yeah. Really? What yeah. is salsa roja? What is that? Just like red sauce. Salsa. Salsa. What you yeah. get for they the call chips. it hot sauce. They they're crazy. Really? Shit. Nah. Yeah, they're crazy. No, nah, no. Nah. I don't. You, <laughs> and everybody, think, everybody thinks like, oh, you're Hispanic. You like spicy food? It's like, no, I don't. I do. I yeah. fuck with it. I can't actually eat spicy food. It's yeah. not good for my body. Yeah. I can't handle it. My, my, yeah, I'm getting can't, old, bro. Can't do it. Yeah, <laughs> no, I get can't it. Can't handle it. I don't it. like spicy food. I'm a mild kind of guy. There you go. Yeah, uh-huh. So you got a Seven Roses Volume Dude. 2 coming out soon? Yes, sir. Yeah, we we saw the the crazy love that the first one got. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's... Have you it, dropped a track list for that yet? Or is it is it going to be a secret? Yeah, I've teased, so a, few, you, I've teased a few. You're still independent, right? No record yeah. now? Yeah, yeah. So on uh, on the record side of things, um, I got let go by Sony Music Nashville in 2017. Okay. So I've been independent. On I the, didn't know you were, you were signed to Sony Music. Yeah, but I only did one project. That's okay. why it wasn't very long lived. Yeah. Um, I'm one of the few that were blessed with um, an exit. Like yeah. they basically let me walk away because Randy, the new CEO after uh, Gary Overton, um, he didn't want to work on any developing acts. Yeah, and so he's like, "Hey, we appreciate you know what you did for us. Thanks for the project, but we're fully focusing on you know the the major artists that we have mm-hmm. right now, like the bigger ones." Um, while while randy figures out his position you know yeah so it was a blessing in disguise yeah. you know they, they didn't know what to do with me mm-hmm. and everything was just kind of like running off the hinges so they let me go yeah. and so that was like a huge uh blessing for me to just go well, and in the time though where you're like fuck what am i gonna do now well yeah i mean you know how it is in nashville whenever you lose a deal people see it very surface level mm-hmm. they see it for what it is and so they, they immediately jump to conclusions yeah. and they're like what happened here? Yeah. He only got one EP and he already got let go. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. he must be hard to work with, you know? Yeah. And it's like, no, that's not, 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 not at all what, the, what happened. It was a, re, a reformation mm-hmm. of, of just the staff. And I was just let go. And I'm actually thankful for it because it allowed me to fully dive into TikTok. That was yeah. like when everything happened. It was yeah, like the transition awesome. from yeah. the label get, dropping me to understanding TikTok. To me, the world shutting down. To the world <laughs> shutting down, and then six on five hours happening, and then uh, and then me, you know, tapping into the Latin stuff recently, and you know, I've been independent since. Um, I'm thankful to you say own that all your recordings. Yeah, yeah. I, I own most of my recordings. Um, I I do a lot of uh, really cool ownership uh strategies with my producers yeah, where yeah, of course yeah, i take care of my my co-writers and my producers which is something that i probably wouldn't have been able to do if i wasn't on, mm-hmm. on a major exactly. label exactly. so i'm able to you know feed my friends accordingly um and it's been really cool man it's very you know there's no better feeling you know creatively and as a human to to just wake up in the morning and be like I want to work with my best friends and yeah. and it's paying off. Yeah. Like everybody that's believing in my vision and a part of like what I'm doing, like they're all thriving with me. Mm-hmm. I feel like on the on a major label, you know, there's a lot of times where they tell you who to get your song your songs produced by, you know, who's going to dress you, who's going to take a picture yeah. for you, who's going to take a video for you. And I don't know. I don't I just don't think that I would yeah. have I would have been able to operate yeah. under that. For those of you who don't know what pressure. he's talking about, um we, you know, this is a songwriter town. People move here to write songs and to have songs on the radio, and that's how they make their living. But sometimes, you know, a lot of artists don't go to radio. So um, giving points on a master to the writers, not only the producer, is a good way to do that. And I think more artists should do that. I've Absolutely. Done that with with my friends and, and uh, people that I write songs with. So I think yeah. that's a – kudos oh dude yeah absolutely and you know songwriters these days are you know they're the ones that are getting punished the most unfortunately and if it wasn't for the songwriter like this town wouldn't even exist exactly right that's the whole point of it being called music city um so the fact that you know as independent artists we have that luxury to you know take care of the people that are literally uh helping us bring our vision to life 
it's a beautiful thing. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I have a lot of cool things in store this year. I'm working on launching my own little independent music label yeah. um, where I'll be distributing my own music. And then it'll also allow me to, you know, discover other other Artists talent and, yeah. on the songwriting side, on the, on the performing side, whatever. Um, but, um, I'm, 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 I've never been more in tune with the business side of, of the industry than I am now. So that's, that's awesome. awesome, man. Yeah. So this new thing, um, seven roses volume two. Yes, sir. I have a segment on here called a verse and a chorus. Okay. So my challenge to you is to play me a verse and a chorus okay. of a song that will be on that. Perfect. Uh, project. You want to go get a get, you yeah. Wanna, oh, your guitar's your guitar is actually over here. Yeah. yeah, it's right there. Yeah. Yeah. Let me grab it. Mac Wayne grab for you. He's my guitar tech on the road. So. <laughs> tune, tune that thing up, Mac I love it. Yes, sir. No, I'm good. Thank you, brother. All right, what are you gonna play? I'm just gonna play it. And you tell me if you recognize it. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is it gonna be like? Is this gonna be on Spanish volume two? Yeah. Okay. All right. Let's hear. Todo va a estar bien, te prometo, cariño. Estas cosas te ponen el corazón frío. Cuando me traes tus labios y me das de tu beso, yo no sé mucho, pero no siento peso. Condenado en el hecho, condenado si sí, no. Si diré que te extraño, ya sé que tú no. O te quiero despertar cuando yo veo el sol. Algo en lo naranja dice que no acabó. ¿Quién seré para ti? El mundo eres para mí, no sé dónde me llevarás. Tomé tu veneno, amor, algo en lo naranja me dice que no volverás. That's crazy. Actually, actually. Song now. <laughs> Man, dude, I'm that's I'm nuts. kidding. I'm kidding. It's a joke. Thanks, um, that's gonna pop off, dude. Have you put that on social media yet? I did. Yeah, I, I shared a little teaser of it uh, the other night. Um, thanks, brother. Um, I shared a little teaser of it. Um, Grab that mic and tell you some more. Yeah, um, I shared a little teaser on Instagram the other night, um, and it did pretty well. It got yeah. like a hundred k. Um, and the, the feedback's been amazing. Did you uh, do the Spanglish or did you just do the whole? I went straight in. Yeah. I just went straight in because what I do is that. The Balls hook, deep, baby. I, yeah. <laughs> I literally just right from the top. I'm like, what if Zach Bryan was Latino? Yeah. And then hit him with the song. So, but again, I, what I said in the beginning of the, of the, of the stream is I'm, I'm making sure that the music and the, and the feeling and just the sound of it all is very similar to the original. I want to yeah, give yeah. them exactly what they're used to, um, just switching up the language a little bit, yeah. you know? But that's, I, it's, that's been, awesome. it's been really we spoke, awesome. Uh, we spoke fun. the other day and I, I, I want you to touch on it and tell your side of it, but like you were saying how some people have reached out and said like, hey man, thank you for doing this. Now I can listen to this music with my wife or my husband or my friend that speaks Spanish mm -hmm. or, or vice versa. And they can enjoy the same song together with the same emotion. Touch on some of that, like how people have yeah, told you that. Yeah, it's been beautiful, man. Um, you know, I, I never in a million years thought that just a, a tiny little adjustment to the way that I approach content, you know, was going to be so impactful. Um, it's become educational, something mm -hmm. that I never thought just, you know, putting captions, right? Because yeah. like what I did in the beginning was I would only put the Spanish words mm -hmm. and i didn't even think of putting the english ones until like two or three videos in and then right when i put the english ones under the spanish ones that's mm -hmm. when things really started taking off and people were commenting stuff like dude thanks to you i don't have to use duolingo anymore i could just watch your videos and yeah. i could like sing along with my favorite songs because i know the melodies already mm -hmm. And I'm like sing i'm like mouthing them by simply reading the captions that you put on your awesome. yeah. tiktoks so like 
basically people are learning how to speak Spanish through music. Yeah. And it's like, it's become like that, That's that, cool. like that crazy. And so another cool thing is that, you know, I'll get the occasion, the occasional, um, you know, American husband that can't speak Spanish with a, with a, a Latina wife. And, uh, he'll be like, man, your music has brought me and my wife closer than ever before, because, you know, I would listen to my country music in English and she wouldn't really vibe with it because, you know, she's, she's a big Spanish music listener. But then the second you started doing the music that I love in her native language, all of a sudden we don't have to fight for the ox, you know, yeah, like yeah. we're just like enjoying it together, even learning the lyrics together so that we could sing along to them. That's awesome. And, uh, and the even be the even greater part about the videos is whenever uh, like uh, like younger bilingual kids will find the music and go to their grandparents that have never been able to understand country music before because it's all been in English. Th they're now able to understand what the country songs that their children love. So Zach Bryan owes you a check. That's what we're getting. To. Yeah. <laughs> hey, I've been trying to get in touch with Zach <laughs> Bryan, but the, the kid turned off his Instagram. Yeah. Like he's, it, he, did you see he deleted it? No, I didn't see it. Yeah, that. he deleted his Instagram. Well, I don't think he deleted it, but it's, yeah, it's like, it's hot. It it's on paused. Break. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's like, on pause. it's on, yeah, disabled. That's crazy. Yeah. That's awesome, dude. But uh, it's just, it's so rewarding on so many levels. Um, and at the end of the day, I, I really do enjoy it because that's where I come from. It's where my family's from. Um, not going to lie, for the first, I'd say maybe seven, eight years, I was living in denial um, because, you know, sometimes in, in, in Nashville, it makes you feel like if you're too different, mm -hmm. it's you're just not accepted, yeah. right? You have to kind of fit in. Um, yeah. And so there were times where I felt like I couldn't be myself, like I couldn't be yeah. like who I really am. And I would mask the fact that I was Hispanic. I wouldn't speak Spanish. I wouldn't like apply it to my music or my songwriting. Um, but funny enough, it was, you know, 10, 12, 11 years in, that's when I started going, you know what? Screw this imposter syndrome. I'm gonna, I'm yeah. gonna full send it. And if you don't like it, great. And if you do, yeah. great. And that's when but everything now you're started. leaning into it. Yeah, dude. man, it's, I mean, it's been incredible, so. That's cool, man. Yeah. That's, that's inspiring, um, even to me, you know, just to lean into it and just be yourself. Thanks, man. And I, and, and I think at the end of the day, it's like, like, wouldn't you want country music to be embraced by more? Yeah. more more For humans sure. and so that's basically why i do it it's not necessarily to you know fix or change anything it's to basically expand the reach and yeah. allow more people from all over the world that might have a language barrier um, allow them to enjoy the, the genre that i love so much yeah when is that album coming uh, so the first one's out, came out in December. Yep, that one, two. yeah, vol volume one was in December. Volume two comes Any out. Any originals on it, or is it just going to be all the? Uh, no originals. So the Seven Roses projects are mainly for the covers. Mm -hmm. um, and then what I what I do basically is that I use the Seven Roses projects to basically make that community aware of yeah. of my existence, yeah. basically. Um, and then in between, I'll just kind of like trickle yeah. a single yeah. or two or three in there. Um, so basically, uh, the Seven Roses projects is to just like bring awareness yeah. to like the overall, like, yeah. you know. Why did you name it Seven Roses? I just felt like roses is a, is a beautiful, you know, item that represents the love. And when you think of Hispanics, you think of like fire and passion and love. And so I immediately gravitated towards the rose and I wanted to kind of create like my own Hicks tape, if you will. Yeah. And so I saw it as a great opportunity to, to, you know, to make a little seven, seven song project every season or by season, um, depending on like, you know, how busy I get, um, where I can take fan requests. And, you know, if, if there's like a certain influx for, Cody Johnson. Yeah. I can make that one of the next seven roses. We should do a Spanglish version of Dick Down in Dallas oh together. Oh my God. We could ruin so your you career. You told me that the night. We can ruin your career too. <laughs> <laughs> more, than, more? more than it already is? Yeah, great. Dude, it might be the most viral thing we've ever done. Man. That'd be awesome. Yeah. I, I don't even know how to say dick down in Spanish. That's I'm, yeah. that's my homework for the night. Yeah, that's your homework for the night. <laughs> Just change it to make send love. it to me. I'll send it to my manager. My manager, my manager. We were talking about doing like a like a five year anniversary thing. You know, when that time comes, and he was like, "We got to do a Spanish version." He was like, "It's going to be the hardest thing you've ever done, but it's going to be yeah. awesome." I was like, 
But I, but when I found out you were coming on the pod, when Mitch mm. told me, I was like, I was like, dude, Alex, fuck that. We're just gonna yeah. get Sammy to do it. <laughs> yeah. It has been in the talks for a long time because Trey's like, how am I gonna remember? It's gonna happen. How to sing it Spanish? I'm so down. Yeah, yeah. as long as you're in, it's gonna oh, happen. Oh yeah, that'd yeah. be sick. I'm not dude. signing. Remember. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I can do whatever. Else. Um, so yeah. when is that project coming out? We you, we skipped over that. Uh, I'm aiming for the end of the month. Okay. Uh, it's kind oh. of like all, a little all over the place. Currently, we have the 29th locked and loaded for it. So we're kind of like under the pressure to get the producers to get it mixed and mastered. So, um, but as of right now, we have uh, something in the orange. You look so good in love, George oh. Strait. See, this is what oh, I was wondering oh, yeah. if you were doing any oh, uh, yeah. 90s country. Oh, for sure. Always. Um, you look so good in love, Joy Stray. Um, Die a Happy Man, Thomas yeah. Rhett. Oh, heck yeah. Uh, your Man, Josh Turner. Uh, except I did like kind of the Stapleton version. I yeah. kind of like blended the two. Um, kind of the more bluesier. Yeah, yeah that's cool. exactly. With the iconic lick, of course. Yeah. Um, we're throwing in uh, What Was I Made For? Billie Eilish. Nice. Not a country song, but, that's cool. but we made it a country version Ish. and yeah. Spanish. So it's like a double. A and double. a male version. Exact and a male version. That's cool. Yeah. So there's a lot of cool little, you know. What about like, could you like changes? Not that you're, we can keep going on your list, but like dust on a bottle. Could you do that or like, yeah. Uh, I feel like, say, uh, or two dozen roses. Uh, Tiene un poco de polvo en la botella. That's cool. Polvo is dust. Yeah. So that, that that's two syllables. Yeah. Polvo. It's not dust on the, yeah. That's three syllables. Polvo en la. I got it's, you thinking it's tricky. already. Yeah, it's 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 harder than you think, man. Yeah. It's like because like the thing is for me, melody is king. Yeah, like everyone remembers the melody. Yeah, for no sure. matter what language you speak. So like if it fits the melody, it's happening. Yeah, if it doesn't fit the melody, it's not happening. You know, one of the hardest ones that I did was one number away, Luke. Oh yeah, and because that song's so wordy. I mean, literally, like, no, 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 no. the verses are so... Is there ever a yeah. time where you take, like, dust on the bottle and translate it to, like, dusty bottle so that it fits the <laughs> melody? <laughs> no, that's a good point, actually. Yeah, uh, yeah there is times. Yeah. I mean, even with Beautiful Crazy, in the Spanish language, the adjective comes after the word. So it's like in crazy In English, beautiful. it's before. It's like yeah. black jacket. Yeah. In Spanish, it's uh, chaqueta negra. Yeah. So it's after. And so... In the songs, you're basically supposed to obey that as well. But when I did Beautiful Crazy, I still kept it bella locura. But yeah. it's supposed to be locura bella. Yeah. But in the song, it didn't feel right. Yeah. And so I said, you know what? Screw it. It's music. Just make your own rules. Yeah. Make your own rules. I did it anyways. They'll and, pick up what I'm putting and, down. And that was the biggest video we had. That yeah. one, yeah, that's like on all the platforms. Uh, it was on Reels. It got six million views. Wow. Um, and it was your followers have had to go crazy because it's getting into a whole di different demographic. It's too. insanity. Yeah, man. Um, we were at like eighty. You got your own thing going on, dog. You know how it's cool it's fun, that is, man. man. It's fun. Yeah, and I, and I want to bring my friends along. You know, yeah. it's like it's not like I'm trying to do it and be like, no, I'm doing this. No, like I want everybody to eat. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. like yeah. if Luke does the crash my playa, like I want to yeah. be there because I could communicate yeah. with the, the yeah. Mexicans there, and and I could you know maybe help expand it a little bit more. But I think it's cool that it's it's uh, authentic. You're not just chasing a number, or chasing a viral video. It's really who you are. Yeah, and it's even who you've been suppressing for years and yeah. trying to act like you aren't. Yeah, to fit in. But now you've now you're just you like they're embracing it. who you are. Yeah, and it it like God is showing you like yeah. Who you are is good. Yeah, hundred percent. And I think one of the key things too to take into consideration is you know nobody likes to be like forced to believe anything mm -hmm. or like you know they don't want to be told to like think a certain way. Like people are going to believe what they want to believe. Um, and I'm aware of the differences, right? We all every culture has its differences and their beliefs. My goal as a musician is to basically do it in a way where people don't even realize I'm Hispanic. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I don't definitely don't want to hide it, but yeah. at the same time, I don't want to be that like, shit normal. I don't want it to be, be a, like a, I'm Hispanic country. Yeah. Like, you know, it's like, that's not what this is about. It's yeah. just that I'm, I'm a country singer and I happen to be Hispanic yeah. and I'm just like you guys. I, yeah. I, I, I breathe, I, I love, I sleep, I shit you know, brown, I shit. My, my, I, my we blood, all do the my same. My blood's red. My blood's red. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. So that's kind of been the goal. And, um, but, uh, when it comes down to the videos, um, it's been insane because, you know, back in November, 
of last of, of last year, I remember being about like eighty five thousand or eighty six thousand on Instagram, and then I started posting those uh, those videos, and we've grown about one hundred and fifty thousand followers in three Damn. months. Boy, yeah, that's it's crazy, it's been insanity. It's crazy. Dude. I can't even yeah. get people to follow me on social media. It's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. yeah, it's it's been nuts, man. And um, every day has been blowing up. That people have been trying to to walk, to boo you up. Well, no, I want to say boo me up. You um, got any crazy? I, I don't. I don't pay attention to those. Like I see but, you got that mustache. But, <laughs> <laughs> I have been. I have gotten the M saying like, "Dude, please, the stash gotta go." And I'm like, dude, the, nope, you know the be, the, be, the, the, the <laughs> best thing about having a mustache is that you forget that you have a mustache. Yep. And you yeah. start talking to people, and you're like, man, I wonder why these people are looking at me dude, funny. And then he, you pass a mirror, you're like, oh yeah, I have a fucking mustache. <laughs> <laughs> well, the craziest part too is that I went to an industry event recently, and <laughs> uh, it was an, an event where I, I was expecting to see some people that I, you know, that I'm cool with, and I would I walked in, and it took them like five seconds. To be like, wait, you that's can hide him. behind a mustache. Yeah, <laughs> that's like, awesome. And it's literally just a little. That thing's thick though, dude. Really? I mean, nah, this, man. Yeah, no, thick, that's man. nothing. Dude, my worst nah. is uh, if I shave my beard, it yeah. reminds me that I have like a double or a triple chin. Oh, got it. And it makes me look so much fatter. So like, <laughs> so I've, you forgot? Yeah, I okay, well, yeah. Got sometimes it. I forget. <laughs> yeah. I am still the best looking person <laughs> in a hundred mile radius. Anyway, um, <laughs> Mitch is always like looking at himself in the mirror. He's like, man, if I lose weight, it's on, man. Dude, if I lose weight, y'all are going to have to get the girls off me. I'm what, is your, what is your analogy about uh, God made you fat or made you Oh, I, I think when God made me, he was like, damn, he looks too good. We got to make him fat or something. <laughs> like, that guy looks too good. He's too funny. Like, we got to make him fat or, or I have a problem. But uh, anyway, I've never met a good looking person that didn't. It wasn't like talking to a, a brick wall. You know, okay. <laughs> so like, there's ups and downs. God gives and He takes. Yeah. Anywho, um, <laughs> what was I? T- oh, I I shaved Kinda my beard. Like yeah, your beard, your beard. Yeah, I'll shave my beard, yeah. and I left a mustache one time, and I forgot that I did it. Okay. And I'm I like you posted it. I walked around for like two days, and I was like, man, people are looking <laughs> at me the old weird. House. I remember <laughs> that. I was like, people are looking at me. So he had like <laughs> he had like the short stash. Though. Oh no! Yeah. Like, like a, the one that was like almost dangerous. Like a poo poo yeah. stash. Yeah. Oh god! Yeah. <laughs> no, I thought it'd be almost dangerous. Yeah, it was dangerous. I didn't know how to cut it, dude. <laughs> like uh, Nacho Libre or some shit. <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm about? People were looking at me crazy as shit, dude. And the, it was the same thing. I looked in the mirror and I was like, oh fuck. And then I was like backtracking where I've been the past three days. Who have I made myself look like an ass in front of? Yeah. Like, cause I forgot that I had a stash and I was fat as shit. But anyway, <laughs> I've been on the weight loss train. I got about 24, 25 more pounds to lose. And then the stash is coming back. So, hey, yeah, let's you know, go. Lord, yeah. Maybe we'll rub them together or something. Nice. <laughs> so uh, the end of March, we'll be expecting maybe the beginning of March, April. Yes. Um, yeah, we'll have some new music from you. Yeah, we're, you'll have a new Seven Roses project. Um, the goal, but you're to- always putting out music, so go follow them on Spotify and everything. Thanks. Right, like now. actually yeah. hit the follow button. Don't yeah. just look. Yeah. <laughs> no, it's uh, yeah, it's gonna be a busy year, guys. Um, I got, I, I'm gonna be trickling in like the covers, the original songs. My focus is here is touring. I want to get on the road. Yeah. Um, at the you moment, got some big shows coming up, right? Yeah, I got a few. Um, I got an Eddie, Eddie's Attic show in Atlanta uh, at the end of the month, 31st of March. And then on the 3rd of April, I'm going to be playing uh, Mercury Lounge in New York. And That's then, cool. And like then in the city of New York? Yes, sir. Maybe you go on the road with us. Um, that'd be fun. Let yeah. me know. Yeah. I, I, I won't come until I have the, the Spanish version. Okay, of, cool. Of Dick Dude, Downer. that would be <laughs> yeah, so yeah, badass. Yeah. We'll make it a moment of Dude, the Dude, we're show. talking about this right now, yeah. but like, we're about to be super viral. Let's go. <laughs> Dude, that work. that's going to be insane. <laughs> How do you translate I will Dallas, say, though? I will say this. Spanish, the Spanish culture yeah. does not have many, like... Perverted songs or yeah, raunchy like, songs? Yeah, like, exactly. Like songs that like are humorous. like that. Humorous songs. That's yeah, exactly, humorous. yeah. So... I got a good feeling about yeah, it. It's yeah. it, it's how cool. do you translate Dallas in Spanish? You just Dallas. call it what it is. Dallas. Yeah. Yeah. So I figure what we could do is the we could do like maybe the verses are in Spanish. And oh yeah, the verses for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The verses could be a little easier because they're more flexible. Yeah. But um, but you never know. There might be some moments in the yeah. chorus that yeah, we can finagle in there. You'll have to but, be uh, sick, dude. You'll have to fiddle yeah. a little bit. I'll be in. I'll be in Austin. Actually, I don't know when I can put it out, but um. <laughs> 
it, it would be awesome to do it. We'll yeah, yeah, we'll have it on deck. We'll figure it out. Yeah, we'll figure yeah, yeah. all that out. At the end of the day, you'll know when to put it out when it, go, when it blows up. I'm bricked up just thinking about it. We'll have it, we'll have it down on deck yeah. waiting to go. I'm going to be in Austin uh, at the end of June. Um, I'm, I'm very, very excited about this show. Um, we're going to be playing uh, Coca-Cola's new Sips and Sounds Festival. Oh, nice. It's like their first version of it and cool. uh it's gonna be really cool um it's on the on like a on a racing track which is really really cool like a nascar like, track yeah like a, like a formula one oh, kinda. Cool. yeah it's it's really cool um and uh, they reached out to me because they found my video on instagram and they're like we don't normally hit up independent artists you know we usually go through like the booking agents and the labels but we saw what you're doing on you know with the bilingual stuff and you know, with this being in Austin, I think our audience would really appreciate what you do. You want to, do you want to do a, a one-off? Um, yeah. Yeah, let's go. And so locked it in independently, which is a, I'm awesome. very, very blessed to have that in the calendar. And yeah, just like trying to get my road legs back up and running. It's been a long time, but you know, now the socials are taking off a little bit. So I think it's a good time to Absolutely. take the show on the road. All right. So let's say yeah. you did, um, like another Seven Roses record, but you could do like any collab you wanted. And five different artists, who would they be? Ooh, that's a good one. You know um, okay, so Chris Stapleton, so hands down. Yeah. Um, there's this Mexican artist that I really love who's blowing up right now. His name's Karin Leon. Mm -hmm. He's massive. He just debuted at the Opry, actually. Yeah. He just did that collab with Kane Brown. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, so Karin Leon's another one. Um I mean, Keith. Keith is one of the reasons why I got into country music. So, mm -hmm. Keith Urban, for sure. Gary LaVox, Rascal yeah. Flatts, for sure. Um, I'm on the podcast. So Trey Lewis, let's go. Yeah. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> I want to get like, but if booted, it wasn't booted me, out of here. <laughs> if it wasn't me, who would it be? Could it be any genre? Any any genre, whatever you want. Dead or Alive? Dead or Alive. Really? Yeah. Michael Jackson. Michael Jackson. Of That'd course. Be like, That'd be sick. King dude. of Pop. Yeah. Well, dude, this is uh, honestly, I will say, been... I mean, I'll go on record here. This has been my favorite podcast we've ever done. Hell yeah. It's been awesome. Let's go. Truly inspiring dude. Like everything that I would like to stand for as an artist, you're doing it. You know, you're being yourself. Thanks, brother. Um, you're, you know, you're leaning into what you believe in and, you know, you're out there changing the world and that's what it's all about to me. Um, where do people find you? Man, uh, I'm always on Instagram, TikTok, uh, my website, sammyariaga.xyz. And uh, you guys can find all my tour dates as well if you hit the link in my bio on Instagram. What's the Instagram name? Just Sammy Ariaga? Just Sammy Ariaga, thankfully. How do you spell Ariaga? A-R-R-I-A-G-A. -R -R -A. You got to roll the R's, mm -hmm. though. Can you roll your R's? I don't know what that means. You don't know how to roll your R's? I can roll. I'm big. I'm round. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> come on. Yeah, it's you like, can do it. <laughs> I can be your hero, baby. <laughs> <laughs> hero. Hero. There you go. <laughs> I, can't do it. I can't quite do it anymore because I have new teeth. Hero. <laughs> I haven't done that. So, so that's your new excuse. Got it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Try it again. Hero. Hey, there you go. There so not, go. No more excuses. There That's it. Uh, Y'all, please rate, subscribe, share the podcast, tell your friends about it. Um, also, uh, go watch it on YouTube if you're just listening and subscribe. Yeah. Love y'all. Peace out. And tag Peace. your photographers on your cassette. Don't do that. Thanks. <laughs> Trouble maker. I was just like you. Time on my. Can't speak your